the shout I'm talking about. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I tell you what, there ain't nothing better than when you make the devil mad. No devil in hell can stand against the Son of God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you something in here this morning. There is a burden lifting, yoke destroying, anointing. And I'm telling you, whatever you're facing this morning, if you'll get in the attitude of worship and you'll trust God, you will not leave here like you came this morning. You won't leave here heavy. You won't leave here burdened because Jesus is saying, I will destroy it all. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now y'all keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Because you know what happens when you shout? It causes confusion in the enemy's camp. You see, Satan is plotting against you right now. He's trying to work with his demons to figure out how to take you out. But when you begin to lift a shout of praise to your heavenly Father, it confuses their thoughts. They don't understand what's going on, and they have to leave you alone. Give me my first verse that I had. Y'all bear with me, because this was a, a last minute where I got my wires crossed, and I thought he was preaching, and he thought I was preaching, and here I am. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Is anybody in here tired? Are you tired of life? You getting tired of having to just struggle to make ends meet? Every time you turn around, there's something taking your money. Every time you turn around, there's something taking your joy. Is there any of y'all in here that's dealing with that this morning? Well, he said, come unto me, and I'll give you what? I'm going to tell you, you know how you can make the enemy mad while he's attacking you? You got your feet propped up resting. Why? Because you don't have to fight your battles. Can y'all give me a verse from 29? Y'all just bear with me because I didn't give them all these scriptures. We did. We, we flying by the seat of the Holy Ghost in pants. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your what? Souls. A yoke. What is a yoke? A yoke is something that you fasten yourself to. They would take a yoke and join two oxen together so that they would pull at the same pace. The problem is, some of you have allowed yourself to get yoked up with the wrong people. You've allowed yourself to get yoked up with negativity. You've allowed the enemy to allow you to be yoked up with fear, with uncertainty. You love God, but you're still flirting with the world. I love God, but oh, wait a minute. I need to go to a party. I love God, but I need to go do this. God said this morning, I'm going to lift those yokes and burdens off of you, and you're going to become yoked to me. So that whatever you do, I'm the one doing the pulling. All you need to do is praise. I'll pull, you praise. Some of y'all got that. Gas, five dollars a gallon. I'll pull, you praise. I don't know how I'm gonna put food on my table. I'll pull, you praise. What about monkey pots? I'll pull, you praise. What about coronavirus? I'll pull, you praise. 
Yeah, but I don't, I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'll pull, you praise. I have anxiety. I'll pull, you praise. That's a pretty good setup. He does the pull and we do the praising. What is it? And, and, and when you think about his yoke to your mind, your mind is part of what? Your soul, mind, will, and emotions. What is man made up of? A spirit that has what? A soul that lives in a body. So if his yoke is dealing with my thoughts and where the enemy attacks me, he said that if you'll just learn from him, everybody say, we fixing to learn something today. If you'll learn that he is meek and lowly in heart, what does that mean? He cares more about you than you'll ever understand. And you may be saying, well, yeah, but what I'm dealing with, that's not important to God. No, he's meek and lowly in heart. The smallest issue that hangs you up, he said, I care about. The smallest problem I was hung up on that cross for. So don't let the enemy tell you that your problem is not important enough to concern your God. When the enemy tells you that, just say, shut up, Jesus pull, I'll praise. What is, he said he'll give rest unto your soul. You see, a lot of y'all are getting physical rest, but your minds are wearing you out because there's people telling you you're not good enough. The enemy's telling you it's never going to work. Some of y'all, you, you, you want to tithe, but yeah, but well, if I tithe, I can't pay my bill. That's when you need to tell Satan, shut up. Jesus, you plow, you pull our praise. You see, it's dealing with your mind. He said he would give rest to your soul, so he'll give rest to your mind. How many of you have ever slept all night but woke up tired? Why? Because your mind won't quit. The enemy gets in your mind and tells you everything contrary to the Word of God. Now give me my next scripture. And you have to remember something. Now I wrote this, let me get this right. I wrote this note down a while ago in my, in my handy dandy smartphone. And I can't read it, so hang on. I can zoom in. What you permit, this is, this is what God spoke to me. He said, what you permit will persist. What you permit will persist and what you allow will align you see if you persist in doing things contrary to the word of God you're not going to change you're going to keep facing the same problem over and over and over what you allow in your life you eventually will align to you know some people that every time you're around them, they seem like they're in the middle of a drama? The, the Karens of the world? Cut them loose. You're not, you're not your friend and neighbor's trash can. You're more valuable than that. Not everybody that's sent into your life is sent into your life to be a blessing. Some of them become what? A burden. Yeah, but that, that's my family. Well, you quit worrying about them and give them to Jesus. You can't fix it. If you could, it would already have been done. But now you worrying, you fretting, you sad, you depressed, you're not your normal self because you worrying about something you can't fix to start with. And it's caused a burden to come upon you and now you're walking when you carry something heavy, now I'm not looking up at my Savior. I'm looking down in defeat. And you see, he said, it shall come to pass in that day. What day is that? Well, I like to think it's today. 
that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulders. The burden that you've been carrying, God said, if you'll give it to me this morning, I'm going to take it. Why? He'll take that heavy burden off, and the burden he puts on you is light, bearable. And then he said, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be what? The yoke shall be what? Now, I mean, y'all can act like you a Baptist church if you want to, but we want the devil to know in hell and all his demons that the yoke will be what? Now, that's what we're talking about. And it's destroyed because of what? The what? The anointing. Now, give me the next scripture. Hallelujah. Y'all keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This, 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 is, this is why. This is why that today the yoke will be destroyed and the burden lifted. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm talking about me. <laughs> because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's not just poor money-wise. That's poor in spirit. People that's been beat down by the enemy that don't have that note of victory, you can have it today. And he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. If you come in this house this morning with a broken heart, God's fixing to flood you with liquid love that's fixing to put everything back together. It's going to mend those hurts that other people has caused you. And for the first time, starting today, you're going to begin to see yourself for the child of God that he said you are. And he said to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set liberty to them that have been bruised you see he wants to set you free from the abuse that's been in your mind that you've beat yourself up with that you've tormented yourself with where you have allowed satan to work in your life jesus said to tell you today that it stops now now how many of you have been dealing and can say, I've been dealing with some yokes. If that's you, get in this altar. How many of you can say, I've been dealing with some burdens. There's some issues, some people in my life that because of what's going on has caused me to put on an unnecessary burden because of my love for them but it's weighing me down. It's causing me not to walk in victory. And I see that, and I realize that it's only Jesus that can carry that burden. I can't do it anymore. If that's you, get in this altar. You see, it's like the verses of that song. When I think about the Lord and how he saved me, how he raised me, how he picked me up and turned me around. You see, there's a turnaround anointing in the house. Some of you have been heading down the wrong path, and God said today, you're fixing to do a 180. I'm fixing to turn you around. And you're not going to walk in the struggle anymore. You're not going to walk on the sinking sand. I'm going to place your feet firmly on solid ground. Why? Because he said the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Are you righteous this morning? Yeah, are you saved? Then you're righteous. There's no more flirting with the enemy. We got to cast down those thoughts. We got to cast down those worries. Every time they begin to rise, God, I've given that person to you. God, I've given that situation to you. It's yours to deal with. I'm going to love them, but you're going to fix them.
and on those thoughts, every time those thoughts, those yokes come, nah, Satan, I'm not dealing with this. You're a liar. You're the father of lies. Everything you say I can't do, God said I can do. You see, we have to cast those imaginations down. And then the thoughts that God gives me, the yoke that he gives me, is light. Well, if I'm carrying a light yoke and a light burden, I'm not bent down anymore. I can straighten my back out and I can look up. And the scripture says, look up. Why? Because your redemption draweth nigh. It's time to quit walking with your head down, and it's time to start walking with your head up. Why? Because we are victorious. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. He is the one that can do abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. So just everything you're believing him for, he wants to do it better. You want the best cake in the world, and he says, that's fine but I want to put a little cool whip and cherry on top that you didn't even ask for. Do you believe the anointing is in the house? I said, do you believe that the anointing is in the house? A burden lifting, yoke destroying anointing. Then you, you sitting in the, in the seats, y'all pray in the Holy Ghost, lift your hands and worship. Choir, y'all can sing again, and we fix to destroy some yokes and lift some burdens off of people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you're watching online, I'm telling you, Generation Z, which is from 8 to 24, has the highest depression rate, the highest anxiety rate, and the highest suicide rate. But I come to tell Generation Z that Satan don't have a right to tell you that. And that today, we're taking Generation Z back for the kingdom of God. If you're in Generation Z, God loves you. God cares for you. You're not ugly. You're beautiful. You're not stupid. Put on the mind of Christ. Get off of that social media that tells you what you can't have and start looking in the Word of God that tells you that you can be what God said you can be. And I'm telling you under the authority of God right now, Satan, I bind your attack on Generation Z. We come against suicide. We come against anxiety. And we loose their holds on these children, this young generation now. And through the airways and through the internet, we loose the power and the anointing of God that breaks every yoke and destroys burdens. And we call it done now in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Whew. See, this is your fault. You should have preached this morning. Yeah, that's what I have. church anymore we're on the battlefield whether you had whether you like it or not you've been drafted into God's army and we have to fight some of us we get bored if we pray five minutes some of us we're mad because we've been praying for 30 but what happens if you pray for 45 who gets set free if you'll pray that extra minute if you'll give that one extra shout if you'll act like you excited one extra time for God, who else will it set free? What other burdens will it let loose? What other yokes will be destroyed? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep praying. God's doing a miracle right over here. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your holy and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. <laughs> all right, all my men, I'm going to give you one instruction that God said. This is for all the fathers, head of households. It's time to be the head of the house. Your wife should not have to stand in the gap for your family. She should have to stand in agreement as you stand in the gap. It don't matter what your children are doing right now. If they hear, praise God. But it doesn't matter what they're doing. Every time you get a bad report, Every time it looks like things are going opposite, you just remember, God said, I'll pull, you just praise. So when it looks bad, you say, no, Satan, as for me and my house, we will, not maybe, not might be, not if certain conditions are met, we will serve the Lord. Don't give up on them, you fight. We need men to fight. We need to get mad. Yeah. And, and brag on your children. And brag on them. Let them know you're proud of them, that you love them. Don't let every word that comes out of your mouth be a word of correction. You can correct them, but love on them. You proud of me, Dad? Oh, wait a minute. He took too long, my feelings are. He was in Missouri. He's coming back. Well, you got anything else? You good? He said, when in doubt, shout. 